I had had you know, a lot of success in my life, and then all of a sudden life happened to me. And I went through some, some, some very big failures and some massive pain and some massive struggles in my life. A failed marriage, a failed business, and ultimately found myself, just like you guys said, with no hope. Yeah, I, I, I sat there and I said, what, what am I, you know, I going to do with my life? And it wasn't until that moment that really God finally spoke to me and told me, you've been trying to seek out and search for significance everywhere else but through me. introduce uh, Tyler Harris to you for a second here, okay? Uh, this man uh, has a lot to say. He knows all about failure, but he also knows a lot about success. And he's got some very good words for you. And if he, if he don't preach like a preacher, maybe he'll leave me a minute and I'll talk to you in the end. But, it, but I want him to have some range to talk to you today because, man, ever since I've met this guy, I've watched the transformation of God in his life from where he was and where he is today. He just took his first trip uh, to Nicaragua with me and it was a transforming trip. And uh, he's not the same guy today that he was even last week, okay? Give me a little hand for Tyler Harris. <laughs> I'll tell you just a little bit about my story. I won't be long-winded um, in that because my story is not important as, as your story. but. You know, I, I come from a good home, um, you know, went to school, got pretty good grades, you know, went to college and, you know, did pretty well. But that entire time, there was something missing in my life. And, you know, my life lacked this significance. And I was always trying to chase that significance through getting good grades or through you know, scoring a touchdown or I was a wrestler. So it was, you know, through beating my opponent and it was through once I got out of school in the business world is, you know, let me go sell the most of this and let me go do the best at that. And that was the way I was finding my significance. And what I learned was just as you guys said that you've been in that place where you felt like you had no hope when you're chasing significance and chasing for your purpose and those external things, it's going to leave you in a place where you feel like you have no hope. And I got to a place in my life where I had achieved some things. I'd had some failures. I'd had some successes, but the significance just wasn't there. And I realized that I was looking for significance in myself and not realizing that God had made me significant from day one. And that it was really only through me connecting with God that I was going to be of any significance altogether. And so for those of you that are sitting there, and, and it may be, you know, you, you raised your hand and you said, you know, I felt like I've, I've been in a place where I didn't have hope, but it could be right now that's what you feel. And what I would tell you is if you feel like you don't have hope, it's because you haven't connected with the one that can give you hope. Amen. That you hadn't connected with the only person that can provide you with that significance that we all crave. We, always, we all want to be significant, Right. We all, we, we all want to do good things. We all want to, you know, have success. We all want to have other people look at us and say, like, that person did something. Well, the only way we can do that is by connecting with God. Or you're going to end up in a place of hopelessness. You're going to end up having done some things, but looking back and saying, man, what, what did I miss? What did I miss? And so that was my story. And I had, I had had, you know, a lot of success in my life. And then all of a sudden life happened to me. And I went through some, some, some very big failures and some massive pain and some massive struggles in my life, a failed marriage, a failed business, and ultimately found myself, just like you guys said, with no hope. You know, I, I, I sat there and I said, what, what am I, you know, I going to do with my life? And it wasn't until that moment that really God finally spoke to me and told me, you've been trying to seek out and search for significance everywhere else but through me. <laughs> and, and it was in that moment that I was able to take complete ownership of my life. And what I mean by taking ownership, this is something I, I love to talk about because the lack of taking ownership, or you could call that responsibility, the lack of responsibility is a big problem in our world today. And what that looked like for me is it looked like 
you know, me looking in the mirror and telling myself, everything's your fault. Everything's your fault. And taking ownership of that. Because if everything's your fault, and if you are exactly where you are today because of the decisions you have made and the things that have happened, you know what that means? That means that you can get yourself to wherever you want to go. Because if you got yourself here, you can get yourself anywhere. And it wasn't until I took that ownership of my life and understood that, hey, that failed marriage, that was all my fault. That failed business, all my fault. That I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be based on the things that I've done. And until you, until you get to that point, it's like you're literally handcuffed. And when you're pointing at other people and you're putting the blame on other people, well, my wife did this, or my business partner did this, or my friend did this, or my teacher did that, or my parents did this. Every single time you put that blame on somebody else, you're like saying, hey, here, here's the keys to my handcuffs. Go, you go take that for a little while. And then my parents, hey, parents, take, take these keys to my handcuffs. And you hang on to those for a lot. When you stay shackled and you don't have hope. Right. And it's not until you take those fingers that are pointing outwards at everybody else and point them at yourself that you unlock those, those handcuffs and you take, you take ownership of your life and you break three of those shackles and you realize, huh, I can do this. But you know, the interesting thing is it wasn't just the process of me taking ownership that changed everything. It was me taking ownership, but realizing I couldn't do it alone. So once I realized that I had gotten myself into that mess and that only I could get myself out, I realized that it was only through God that I could get myself out and that it was only through God that I did have hope of what was to come. And so for me, that looked, you know, very, very, for everyone, it's going to look very different. But for me, it became this, what I call waging war on personal change. Because a lot of people, they say like, well, I want to get better and I want to grow and I want to learn and I want to, you know, start, you know, going after my dreams. But it's a whole different thing to start waging war. And my life had been, you know, beaten down to the point where I had to do something big. I had to do something drastic. And so I, I waged war on becoming a better person. But it wasn't until I allowed God into that conversation, until I allowed God into that, that scenario, that things really started to change. Because I wanted my life to be a picture of what happens when I get to the end of myself, and then God begins to show him through me. Right. And I wanted the things that I had accomplished to be viewed by other people as there's no way that guy could have done that. Like there's no way I could do the things that I'm doing. It's only through God working through me that I'm able to do those things because I'm nothing special. I don't have any particular skills or talents or uh, abilities that any of you probably have. But when God works through me, all of a sudden the things that I have become powerful And all of a sudden, the things that I can do start to make a difference. And so for those of you that are sitting there right now thinking, well, you don't understand my story. (laughs) You don't know the way I grew up. Um, You don't know the things that I've been through. I would say, you're right. I don't. But God does. And, And your story, your past, the things that you've been through, the things that you've done, It matters to God, but it doesn't matter to what God can do through you because God knows all those things and he allowed those things to happen and he's here waiting to lock arms with you and take you to wherever in the world you want to go because of those things. And I look back at my life and I know that every single failure, struggle, pain that I ever went through, I am now grateful for those things because those things made me who I am today. And I can completely, completely understand that as you can hear that, you can say, well, yeah, yeah, sure. But until you get on the other side of it and you're able to look back and say, oh, now I get it. Now I know why I went through that with my parents growing up. It's because now I can be the best parent ever to my kids. Or, oh, now I, went, now I know why I went through that problem at school. It's so that now I can help others that are going through similar things. 
and you realize that these things that at the time were gigantic struggles for you now are the reason why you can go do the things that you can do through God. And, you know, I just, I, I want you guys to understand that there is not a circumstance that you could be in. There is not a wrong that you can have done that somehow disqualifies you from God doing that through your life. Amen. That there's nothing you could have done, thought about doing that separates you from the Holy Spirit getting a hold of you and doing amazing things with your life. Amen. The incredible thing about you guys sitting here is you're all, you're all so young. But the cool thing is, like, I'm 34, and I'm so young. Dave's 72, and Dave's the youngest guy I know, based on his activity level every day. And so, you know, it's, it's easy to, to, take, to take this period of time in your life and think, man, I'm young. I got plenty of time. But my biggest regret is not having realized what I could do with God sooner. Because I think about where I would be in my life right now had it been 10 years ago that I had this transformation in my life and, and allowed God to really grab a hold of me and to go on this journey with him where I would be now. And so the question is, what are you waiting for? If, if we know that our lives can get radically better, if we're not doing life alone. Amen. How many of you have ever felt like you're just doing life alone? Yeah. That was one of the biggest, that was one of the biggest things for me. I hated to be alone. Hated to be alone. I grew up in a family, you know, went to school, lived with a bunch of people at, sc at school, immediately got married right after school, so I was with my wife. And it wasn't until I had gone through this divorce and I found myself all by myself, just alone. For the very first time. It wasn't until that moment that I could finally hear God speaking to me. Right. And, and I now realize that it was in those moments when I was finally alone that I dreaded. I hated being alone. But it wasn't until those moments that God actually got through all the noise. Because I know what it's like. I, you know, you're, we're constantly on our phones. We've got social media. We've got you know, all these things happening around us that make it very, very easy to stay, easy to stay distracted. It's very, very easy for us to go through life and never just sit in silence. But it was in those moments when I was sitting in silence at my lowest level, when I didn't feel like I had hope, when I felt like I was all alone, that God finally spoke to me. And I can't tell you how different my life is now for the better. And does that mean that every single day is great? Heck no. Every single day is not great. I still have pain. I still have struggles. And when you start going through life with God and partnered with God and with this relationship, this, it's, it's literally like this, this new friend in your life. It doesn't mean that you're not going to still go through pain. It doesn't mean that you're not still going to have obstacles and you're still going to have struggles and you're still going to have you know, people that wrong you and that things that still don't seem fair. But it's like when you're going through that now, You've got this, this best friend by your side that's got your back, right? right? And what I needed in those times when I felt like I was all alone is I just needed someone that I felt like had my back. Amen. Because how many of you have ever been in a situation where when you, if you had known someone had your back, you would have probably gone a little further, yeah. right? Like if somebody would have been in this situation when I was dealing with my parents, if somebody would have been in this situation at school when this was happening, if somebody had just had my back, man... I may not have handled it the way I handled it. Yeah, right. Well, for me, my relationship with God means that I know that there's always somebody that has my back. Amen. That no matter what I'm going through, no matter where I am, no matter how terrible things seem, that somebody's got my back. Okay. And for me, that is the greatest, greatest, greatest confidence I could ever have. It gives me the confidence of knowing that I can do literally anything. Because I've got someone that's never going to leave my side, that's always got my back, that'll always be there to support me when I fall, and will always be there to celebrate with me when I succeed. And that's the greatest feeling ever. 
And so for those of you that feel like you have no hope, and for those of you that maybe feel alone, and not maybe an alone in the sense that I'm not around other people, because if you don't realize, you can be very alone when you're around tons of people as well. I've been in my most alone moments ever when I was surrounded by people. But it's because I was alone in my thoughts and I was alone in my head. But for those of you that are going through that right now, I would just ask you, what are you waiting for? That if you know God can come into your life just by inviting him. And that he doesn't care what you did today. He doesn't care what you did last night. He doesn't care what you just texted a friend two seconds ago. That he loves you so much that he would be willing to have your back. Like that, you know how crazy that is? You know how amazing that is? If somebody would have sat here and, and, and shared this with me when I was your age, I promise you I wouldn't have gone through the pain that I went through. I still would have gone through pain, but I would have gone through it knowing that somebody had my back the entire way through. And it would have made those struggles so much, so much less painful. And, and it would have made to where I didn't cause pain to so many more people. Because if any, of you, if any of you guys felt like it's not just you feel pain, but you feel like you're causing other people pain? Have you ever felt like you're, you're, you've been a burden on other people? You've been a burden on your parents? You've been a burden on your teachers? You've been a burden on your friends? That's the way I felt. I felt like, you know, who am I? Who am I to have a God that would be willing to forget all the bad things that I'd done? You know, who am I to have a God come into my life that says, I, I don't care what you've done. I don't, I don't care the people that you've hurt. That I'm, I've got your back. I can't tell you the peace that comes with that. Because at the, at the end of the day, feeling hopeless is all about not having peace. And for me, the only way I can have peace is knowing that God's got my back. And there's a big difference between pain and suffering. Pain is necessary. Let's take the, most, the easiest example. You put your finger on a hot stove and it's painful, right? <laughs> and, it, and it tells you that that's not a good thing to do. So if you didn't have pain, it would be a problem when you put your finger on that stove if you didn't have pain because you would just sit it there and all of a sudden next thing you look down, your, what, your finger's gone, I guess, at some point. So pain is one thing. Pain is necessary. Pain is required. But suffering is when you play that pain over and over and over and over in your head. Suffering is not required. And I truly believe that having a relationship with God just inviting God to say, God, will you come in and have my back is the only thing that allows you to not suffer. Amen. That you're still going to experience pain, but that when you experience pain, it won't turn into suffering. Amen. And so I don't sit here and wish any of you to never go through pain. I hope you go through pain on a, on a regular basis, but I hope you never suffer. And I know that the only way that you can do that, that the only way that you can go through life and not suffer is by having someone have your back. Amen. And I believe it's God. Amen. And so, guys, what I'd love to do is pray for you and pray with you. Um, and just ask for those of you that feel like you need hope right now, for those that, you feel, that feel like you just, that no one's got your back, that you would invite God into your life and it'd be that easy. God, just come into my life and, and have my back. And everything changes from that point on. So guys, let's pray. Heavenly Father, man, I thank you for every single person here. I thank you for the pain that they've gone through. Because the pain that they've gone through, the things that they've gone through, brought them to this place today. And it brought them to this place for them to be introduced to you, maybe in a new way. To be introduced to you as someone that ultimately just wants to have their back. 
And that in those times when they feel hopeless, in those times when they feel like they don't know what to do, that there's someone, someone that's looking out for them. And God, I ask you to come into this place and the person that needs that, that you open their heart to receive you. Because God, without you, life is so difficult. Without the peace of knowing that you're on our side, that you've got our back, that you're looking out for us, life can be terrifying because it's uncertain. And I ask that you, you come into this place and you give somebody here certainty. That you allow someone here to leave this place today certain that you have their back. So guys, I just ask you, if that's you, if you're the person that's sitting there and they're saying, man, I need somebody to have my back. I need somebody to look out for me. I would just ask you to raise your hand. And I'd ask you to for this one small moment, not care about what the person to your left, what the person to your right is thinking. Not caring if there's anybody in the room with their hands up or if every single person in the room has their hands up. Repeat after me. Jesus. Jesus. Come into my life. life. So that you can have my back. Give me hope. Give me me peace. And I will follow you every day. Jesus, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. Jesus, I love you. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Guys, whether, um, whether you know it or not, just saying those words and meaning it, it'll change your life like you could not believe. And I'm standing here in front of you only, only because one of those days I was finally willing to not care what the other people around me thought and to pray that prayer. Because the people around me, they couldn't provide my salvation. They couldn't have my back at all times. Only God could. And it changed everything in my life. And that's what I hope for you leaving today. And and it's an honor to be able to speak in front of you Uh, I hope I get to meet all of you uh, this afternoon, and uh, thank you. Hi, guys. We're up here in uh, Little River, North Carolina, and uh, you just never know (laughs) where you're going to end up. Uh, but we just got done speaking, telling a little bit of my story and uh, testimony to some kids with, uh, that are in the Job Corps uh, program and just had the honor to uh, be able to speak to them and just kind of uh, you know, really pour out a little bit of my heart and my faith and hope that that would just you know, be a spark for one of them. And uh, you never know, that little, that little moment, that little um, you know, transition, that little spark uh, and then what that could turn into, the ripple effect of that. You know, not just 
days from now, but years from now, generations from now. Um, to me, it's all about the intent, whether it's through social media or whether it's through a young person, whether it's through going to Nicaragua. It's all about the intent of doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, right?